When the conditions change, you got to obey the last command he gave you. What did God tell you last year that you have totally refused to do? I heard a statement in, in Nigeria when I was there last month. Uh, Bishop Ayedipu was preaching. He made a statement. I wrote that thing down. That thing. He says, he says we should never uh, be selective in, obe in, in obedience. Selective obedience. We decide what we'll obey. You can't do that when you're following God. You got to obey the tower, whatever it says. And I know the pilots, sometimes they tell me, they said, well, they said that we got to go up another, you know, uh, 2,000 feet. I said, why? He said, I don't know. They said, we must go up. Altitude got to change, 2,000 feet. Then he said, okay. They said, we got to go down. We got to drop. Another 10,000 feet. I said, why? He said, I don't know. You just got to do it. In other words, they don't listen to anything except the tower. Do you listen to the Holy Spirit like that? Because the Holy Spirit knows you fire your fight plan with Him. And He knows how to get you to avoid every crash, every collision, every hurricane and storm up ahead. He knows where they are. They can see the whole weather system. God knows where all the potholes are. He knows where all the demonic traps are. And God says, now, drop 10 miles. And you go, well, God, I don't see nothing. It looks good out there. God says, just drop right now. Drop this friend now. Yeah, but God, we went to school together. Drop this friend now. Yeah, but Lord, you know, we go way back. Drop her now. God's trying to save your life. Sometimes you just know it's time to leave the group. They getting into stuff that you ain't trained to be in and it's time to leave and you're still trying to be nice because you want to be approved by them. And you feel the Holy Spirit saying, change course now. Tell them you can't come back here no more. Because he sees the big picture. How many people have lost their future through a friend? I believe that everyone today who is struggling with habits that are destructive was encouraged by friends to start it. What are you doing right now that's taking you off course? Write this one down, please. Submission to the directions of the tower protects your life and the life of others. When that aircraft obeys the tower, it protects itself and the other aircraft. How many people have been destroyed by your disobedience? I wonder how many people have lost their future because you were not in the right place at the right time when you're supposed to be there. And how many folks have lost their future because you were in the wrong place, you weren't supposed to be with them. It's important to stay on course, protect you. This last one is interesting. Never take instructions from other pilots, only from the tower. You know, Captain Thurston, when we fly flying, sometimes he would, he, would switch, he, would, he would switch the fuel frequency and he says, let's listen in. And he would switch the frequency and we could hear, you know, uh, Delta pilots talking, we could hear, you know, American Airlines pilot talking, we could hear these pilots, and they're talking to each other, and everyone talking, talking, talking. And then he switched back, he said, let me keep it on the tower. And then a few times he would switch and he would hear the pilots up ahead say, uh, there's some thunderstorms up ahead. It's bumpy up here. Another pilot would say, yeah, at 20,000 feet, it's bumpy. The guy said, yeah, at 40,000 feet, we got thunderstorms. But we don't change course. Even though they are telling us what's up ahead, we cannot obey them. The tower controls everything. Who do you listen to? Who has taken you off course? You were doing so well last, year, last December. When you were shutting down, you were starting a new year. And man, look at you. You are off course. You are still not accomplishing the things you wanted. Why? Because you listen to other pilots. They tell you what they see. Boy, you got to be careful when you listen to what people's experiences are. Because people's experiences is not God's will for you. I'm going to say it again. People's experiences are not God's will for you. God's word is your only authority, not people's experiences. And they will tell you what they've been through, how tough it was for them, and how they, you know, how they went through this. You listen to them and nod your head, but tell them, yeah, but I got to listen to the voice of God. Because God will not do for me what he did for you. I've heard people say that for many years, if he did it for me, he did it for you. That ain't true. 
That ain't in the Bible. That's not what people quote. God told Mo, uh, Joshua, I will be with you just like I was with Moses. And when you read Joshua, God ain't never done anything with Joshua the way he did it with Moses. Everything was different. So what the Lord did for you, he ain't gonna do for me. He can do better. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. He can do greater than what he did for you, for me. I believe that. He can do it differently. Because he knows the full picture. 